Hey guys, um, do you want a Transformers Prime video? I thought he'd never ask! Wow, okay. Really underestimated how many people love this show. Oh, yes, All this yes. is going to be juicy. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and we're going to talk to you about Transformers Prime. Or more specifically, Knockout. Since last summer, you guys have been begging for a video. Prime is one of my all-time favorite shows, so I'm more than happy to oblige. I did want to make a video on Starscream, as I felt like he had the strongest arc. But thanks to my Alador videos, the most requested character has been Knockout. So he goes first. But like always, I'll provide a little background. Transformers Prime is an incarnation of the Transformers franchise. Arguably, it's their most mature effort outside of the Michael Bay movies. High school me got a lot of writing mileage out of this show. Think of it like Batman the Animated Series. But with robots. It follows the same concept of its predecessors. Autobots battle Decepticons, and they do it on a boring dirt rock called Earth with human companions who range from interesting to so annoying please just squish them already! But it works! The best way to describe the show is think Transformers, with an added layer of reality, seriousness, and deconstruction. Death actually sticks, the bots actually cause property damage, and the fear of their human friends getting targeted is real. It's a known fact that my favorite characters are villains, and this is especially true here. The Decepticons in this show are freaking awesome! And as an eager member, Knockout is within that radius. Granted, he's not my favorite Decepticon, that's either Megatron or Shockwave, but he's still great in his own right. Unlike the majority of the cast, who are often new interpretations of already established characters, he's 100% original. Think of him like Harley Quinn from BTAS. Not meant to be much in the grand scheme of things, but the fandom held on tight and never let go. So where does Knockout fit in? Well, let's discuss. In the show's pilot movie, Darkness Rising, Megatron returns after a five-year journey in space with a special substance he swears will win them the war. Plucked from cosmic shores, gaze upon Dark Energon. Dark Energon can reanimate the dead into mindless zombies, aka terror cons. If you establish your own link to the dark stuff, you can control them, as Megatron tries. Not your spark chamber! You do not know what it will do! Suppositories go in the other way. At the movie's end, Megatron seemingly dies in an explosion meant to summon a planet's worth of terracons, only for the next episode to reveal he's alive, but barely. And thanks to Soundwave not being a huge idiot, Starscream's plan to finish the job is botched. So Megatron is brought back on board and hooked up to life support, much to Starscream's anger. The crew took a vote, and it was decided that an expert might put him on the road to recovery. As a result, he's put under the care of Knockout, the ship's medic. Yes, robots have medics. Knockout, well, how should I describe him? Your TCOG transplant was a success. Yes, I am just that good. Think Darius from the Owl House, if he really was evil, and he had the voice of Stan Smith's daddy. Knockout is one of those bad guys that, for the life of you, you cannot hate, regardless of what he does. Him being on the side of evil just makes him funnier. He gives zero Fs, and I mean absolute zero. So continue buffing. We do want Megatron looking his best for the memorial. Buff this. But unlike most of the other characters who have their own arcs, Knockout remains pretty static. Outside of Shockwave and Soundwave, he's the only major Decepticon that doesn't change in some way, shape, or form, at least in the main series. Even Megatron, of all cons, has a mini arc where he learns humans have benefits. The human factor did indeed tip the scales in favor of my enemy. Knockout's role is to mostly act as comic relief. Awkward. 
But this doesn't mean he's useless. And there are times where he contributes to the story. Throughout the first season, Starscream schemes unsuccessfully to replace Megatron and make it known to the troops that he's Lord Starscream, not Commander. You have defied my orders yet again. My mistake, Commander Starscream. It is Lord. Of course, Starscream is a cowardly sycophant and the absolute worst guy to work under. So they view him like that creepy uncle that's now your stepdad. Thus I am equipped to lead you, Lord Starscream, Emperor of Destruction! <laughs> and there is the off chance Megatron could wake up, so why would they listen to you anyway? You're just a substitute. Well, he does obey, Knockout leads to hate them, mostly because he and Starscream don't get along. Their relationship is kind of like two little brothers. Unless nagging counts, I haven't seen you lift a finger. I am the one who brought him the keys. Well, perhaps if my research hadn't been sidelined by someone's cosmetic surgery, I might be further along right now. With Starscream usually being the one to give commands, as he does outrank Knockout. Knockout follows, albeit not always by choice. Unlike Starscream, Knockout is loyal. Not because he's a parasite trying to survive, but because in terms of troops and technology, the cons have the biggest chance of winning the war. I mean, I guess the way I explain it, he is kind of like a parasite, but I'd call it more of a symbiotic relationship. Unlike Jack Screamington, he knows well enough that Megatron doesn't take backstabbing lightly. So most of the time, he's usually content with his lot in life. In his first scene, Knockout is discriminated by Starscream. Ah, it was a long drive, Starscream. I'm still picking bugs out of my grill. Yes, right, you're one of those. Not because of insubordination, but because he's gay. I mean, his vehicle mode is a car, in Ashton Martin to be specific. Never understood why any self-respecting Decepticon would choose automobile as his vehicle mode when he could have flight. As Transformers once remind children about cars they'll never be able to afford. I like the way I look in steel-belted radials. But while we're on that subject, I think this is an interesting discussion point, considering as how I totally forgot what month this was. In my defense, I thought June had a 31st. Anyhow, while they never outright say it because Prime came out in 2010, Knockout is written a certain way, really. Breakdown may act the brute, but he's a maestro behind a rotary buffer. He even goes as far as to proposition Optimus freaking Prime during a mission. <laughs> Sweet rims, 24 gauge, you're real heavy duty. Not only that, he has an assistant, Breakdown, with whom he's quite close. Breakdown and I enjoyed previous success retrieving Iacon relics. In memory of my fallen comrade, I intend to do the same again. On top of Prime being the least kid-friendly Transformers to date, this has led fans to make certain observations. Apparently, somebody came out and asked at BotCon, and the response given was, on the day of Knockout's creation, there was a glitch in the AllSpark. Yeah, not cool, writers. But Knockout was redeemed a couple of years later, with the graphic novel series, Transformers Windblade. I haven't read it, but apparently, in this version, Knockout is loud and proud. He's even married to Breakdown, to the glee of many shippers. And since this is a June video, outside of that one comment, I don't think Knockout is particularly offensive. He's an entertaining character, and even if he has several stereotypical traits, the show puts less focus on him being a stereotype. Nobody discriminates against Knockout on this principle. The only hate he ever gets derives from his vehicle mode. And most of it comes from Starscream, who isn't the most accepting or selfless person. Besides, he's a villain, and the show makes the point he's evil because he's a sadist who assists in killing humankind. Speaking of stereotypes, let's talk about the main trait of Knockout. Well, traits because he has a couple. Knockout and the word narcissist are synonymous. Vanity Smurf would probably think he's over doing it. Knockout loves his finish. Ruining it is enough for him to demand your head. You painted my paint job! Prepare for surgery! In one episode, when tensions run high between the Insecticons and the rest of the troops, Knockout only gets involved when they interrupt his preening sessions. What is going on out there? How am I supposed to concentrate? <laughs> 
<gasps> I just buffed that! And even if he tries to phrase it as, I'm only doing what's best for our cause, Megatron does not buy it for a second. Just look what they've done. Spare me the dramatics, Knockout. It's merely a scratch. Knockout's second biggest trait is his interest in humankind. He's the only Decepticon capable of understanding the human vernacular. Mostly because he's the only non-boomer among Megatron's inner circle. Aim for the head! What? How do you know? I have seen human horror films at drive-in theaters! The funny thing is, in spite of this, he still thinks of humans as annoying little pets. We're not dating. Frankly, I find it repulsive. The whole idea of you fleshies interfacing. <laughs> it's like being a Francophile and thinking French people are dirty rats. Not skunks or cats with stripes painted down their backs. This, along with his tolerance of Starscream, are on full display in the episode Speed Metal, where it turns out Knockout is competing in Fast and the Furious style races. You have been street racing among the humans again, haven't you? I'm not only an automobile, I'm an automobile enthusiast. And he actually goes as far as to run a guy off the road because he scuffed his paint, which de-move, buddy. Oh, dude. You scratch my paint, I scratch yours. If this was not a kid show, Knockout's tires would be slicked with blood. But question, what if he wins? Does he just drive away and not accept the prize? How does he even enter? He doesn't have a human sidekick. The only thing the Decepticons and the Autobots have in common is they strive to keep a low profile. The Autobots because they don't want humans to get hurt. And Decepticons because they don't want to catch the attention of the Autobots. Starscream, acting semi-responsible for once, doesn't like the idea of knockout street racing, as his place is on the Nemesis. I do strive to run a tight ship. I would strongly suggest that you seek my permission next time you decide to disappear on one of your little jaunts. What does that mean? Is that a euphemism for something? Like, does he think Knockout is pulling a Tennessee Williams and going to the drive-in movies? Who would he even go to the drive-in movies with? Breakdown's right there. And honestly, what else is he supposed to do? There's only so much help you can provide a coma patient. And Breakdown did all the body work. He isn't a human, so they likely don't need to worry about stuff like sponge baths or bedpans. Is Knockout seriously expected to just sit around and wait for him to wake up? And let's be real, if Knockout asks Starscream for permission for anything, Starscream's gonna say no, if only to spite him. Knockout disobeys Starscream once again, this time going up against Bumblebee and Jack, who have gotten roped into the sport thanks to a bully named Vince. Trying to pull one over, Knockout kidnaps Vince, believing him to be Jack. And when the Autobot attempts to stage a rescue, he has a breakdown. <laughs> In the end, Knockout pays the price for his hubris. <laughs> You know how hard that is to replace! Then he has to go home to get a creative scolding, courtesy of Mommy Screamist. You have paid when I say you have paid. Your punishment shall be merely cosmetic. No, not the finish. No. Anything but the finish! No! But there are rare times where Knockout does contribute, like in the episode Sick Mind. For some reason, the Decepticon's cloaking device is on the fritz, which gives the Autobots the advantage, as they can now locate them and launch a surprise attack. While this is going on, Knockout meets with Starscream to discuss Megatron's progress. And how is the patient doing today? Same old. An inglorious fate that he should remain in this vegetative state. Knockout more or less tells Starscream that Megatron's mind is active. Megatron's body may be scrap metal, but his mind is still percolating. But he has about as much chance of waking up as his Powerpuff Girls has of making a decent spinoff. It's almost like he has some weird dream he refuses to wake up from. Ooh, maybe Megatron ate before his coma. That would explain it. I love having Ajita dreams. 
Starscream, impressed by Knockout, offers him the position of second in command. However, there is one obstacle, Soundwave, Megatron's most loyal soldier, who is determined to keep Megatron alive, no matter what. Candidate would need to earn that post by making a strong case. A case for showing mercy, Lord Starscream. If Knockout is able to convince Soundwave that Megatron is <laughs> he'll earn the position. So they go full Broadway and put on a well-rehearsed song and dance. Knockout, if you would be so kind as to provide your expert medical opinion to Soundwave. Simply put, unaided, Megatron could remain in this deathless slumber forever. They tell Soundwave that Megatron would want mercy, so they should just yank the cord and call it a day. To stand idly by while he remains captive in his own body is not just. Brainwave activity, not evidence of consciousness, but merely of an endless dream from which Megatron may never wake. The only honorable option would be to show him mercy. Quick, painless, compassionate. Um. I think South Park learned about Megatron's condition and made an episode on it, which went on to win them an Emmy. While this is going on, Optimus is dying of an incurable illness. RC and Bumblebee have entered Megatron's mind in the hopes of finding a cure, only for them to end up doing Knockout's work for him, as B rouses Megatron out of slumber and makes him aware of his condition. Oh, take me with you! Take me! In the real world, Starscream is savoring this moment. Speak now, or forever hold your peace. Going. Only to find two flies in his ice cream. What in? As they escape, RC gives Starscream his happy ending. Allow me. <sighs> it was the inevitable outcome. Of course, it would be wrong to allow Megatron to perish by an Autobot's hand. Next episode, Knockout is settling into his role as second in command quite well, but it's obvious he has no experience in the leadership department. His only real skill is eavesdropping. The plan so epic. <laughs> Not even the mighty Megatron could have conceived it. How long have you been there? Long enough. Starscream talks to himself? When he believes he's alone? Is he my spirit animal? To top it off, neither he nor Starscream have ever heard of this little thing called subterfuge. So the Autobots quickly catch onto their plan to melt the Arctic for the Energon underneath. I think South Park also watched this episode since this is the plot of their newest special. Megatron's consciousness has gone full Darcy on Bumblebee's body and is hard at work restoring his own. Decepticons, your rightful lord and master has returned. Effing awesome. Lord Megatron, you're healed. It is a miracle. Oh, it will be a miracle, all right, Starscream, if you survive what I have planned for you. Knowing Starscream tried to kill him more than once, Megatron drags him off for due punishment. <laughs> Resting comfortably, Starscream. And this is Megatron's version of letting him off easy. Except he strangely never goes after Knockout. The most disciplined Knockout gets is he has to treat Starscream, which, as the ship's medic, he was gonna have to do anyway. Of course, Starscream is impatient of the year, but why would that be a punishment? This kinda got me. Like, yeah, Knockout didn't pluck the Dark Energon out of Megatron's chest, but he still schemed to put the pillow over his head. Besides, it's not real-world events. Megatron still had brainwave activity when they were planning this, and if it weren't for plain luck, Knockout would've gotten away with it. Megatron doesn't even learn about the backstabbing until the end of season two, which I'll get to eventually. And they never even phrase it as, oh yeah, I knew all along, or something like that. Soundwave is quite competent at surveillance, I can assure you. That's what he told Starscream. This bugs me because the first season makes a big deal about Soundwave being Big Brother. On board the Nemesis, a mouse can't pee on a cotton ball without Megatron finding out. That blasted Soundwave sees and hears everything. The eyes and ears of the Decepticons. It's weird Soundwave never told Megatron, or 
since Knockout is Megatron's doctor, does he know that if he says anything, Knockout will tell the nemesis about that mole on his back? Another time the show doesn't properly utilize Knockout is in the episode Operation Breakdown. Breakdown gets captured by Mech, a group of human terrorists who want to study Cybertronian biology and use it to take over the world. Their leader is Mr. Krabs. You're spending all my money! Mech captures Breakdown so they can vivisect him, not dissect him, there is a difference. Even successfully managing to gouge out one of his eyes. Word reaches Megatron. How does he react? Breakdown is on his own. If Breakdown allowed himself to be captured by those smaller than him, weaker than him, he deserves whatever fate awaits him. Honestly, I do kind of get it. At this point in time, the Decepticons as a whole, not just Megatron, still view humans as insects. They won't understand anything. They're just playing with fancy toys. It's cruel, but I at least understand where he's coming from pragmatically. But the person who's most shocked at the news is a knockout. It's Starscream. But Breakdown is a key player in our... Which, again, is so weird. Knockout's best friend is captured, and Megatron doesn't care if he lives or dies. Maybe he's at the movies? While the cons are ordered to sit on their hands, Starscream organizes a search party. Man the lifeboats! In typical Screamer fashion, while he likely was concerned for breakdown safety, he knows an opportunity when he sees it. One day you will repay your debt to me, Breakdown. Between bots and cons? Between myself and Megatron. Weird this never comes up again. What is weirder is he never asks Knockout. Knockout, Breakdown is captured and Lord Megatron won't do anything. As his second in command, I order you to help. It would be the best thing for Breakdown. Sadly, going back to Breakdown, he would later die. Spoiler alert. Arachnid rejoins the Decepticons, albeit not by choice, and she tries to take over when Megatron is predisposed. Presumably learning his lesson from Starscream, Megatron sends Breakdown and Dreadwing to deal with her. She can be a handful, especially when cornered. Next her one thing, did you really think she was gonna go gentle into that good night? Even she calls you out. Am I the only one here who considers this to be overkill on Lord Megatron's part? Dispatching two of his most proficient warriors to track down one unconfirmed Energon spike. The sad thing is, Breakdown was meant to have a redemption arc, but the crew was told they needed to fire one voice actor to save the budget. So he was the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> Mech found Breakdown's body and repurposed him for Silas as a form of life support. Silas, now Silas, there is a difference. Cybernetic life augmented by symbiosis. Is grateful that Mech saved his life. He decides to use his new body to curry favor with Megatron, giving his soldiers the pink slip, and their severance pay will be death. The Decepticons find Breakdown Signal, and unlike before, Megatron gives Knockout permission to go investigate. Breakdown, where have you- Breakdown? What happened to you? I feel so bad for Knockout. Like, he was so happy to meet his Biffle after all this time, and he finds that thing. Even Megatron is repulsed. Knockout, what is this abomination? And why have you brought it here? To them, it's like watching someone's in the kitchen with Sandy. In real life, Knockout wants to skewer Silas for cannibalizing Breakdown. This is the human who dissected Breakdown. Please, my liege, allow me to return the favor. But Silas tells Megatron there's benefits to having humans on his side, even if they're some weird nesting doll freak of nature. Reluctantly, Knockout is forced to stand down. Silas has brought an offering, Damocles, a satellite with a laser capable of targeting anybody, provided you have their coordinates, which, holy cow, paranoia. What is it that you wish in return? Merely a place at the table. Do you want a coaster and a doily too, Sai? It seems, despite being a colonel in the military, Silas is a naughty wench who doesn't understand Decepticon protocol. Megatron, relax. Lord Megatron, 
Surely one of your subordinates is more suitable. Now! Silas, how difficult is it to squash a human child? Um, do not question your new lord and master, you shepherd's pie style meatbag. You are more out of place than a Catholic schoolgirl at a Miley Cyrus concert. When Damocles obviously fails due to status quo, Megatron decides, you know what, I'm a pretty forgiving boss. I'll give Silas his place at the table. Knockout's dissection table. Jeez, and this is why you don't fire your entire staff. Imagine if you let them live. Sure, you'd be on thin ice, but you would have bought yourself a little more time. We get to see a side of Knockout. It becomes more prominent in the later parts of the show. His sadism. Breakdown would be tickled. Sucks he's a normal doctor. Imagine if he were a dentist, he would scare the cavities out of Steve Martin. So Knockout tracks the Frito Pie disaster to be dissected. I will leave no fiber or fiber optic unexamined. And that's the last we see of Silas for a long time. Speaking of sadism, there are other times when we see it in full swing. For example, the Decepticons capture Smokescreen when they find out he has the final Omega key embedded in his chest, albeit they don't know what it does. Knockout, instead of just taking the key and killing Smokescreen then and there, takes the opportunity to toy with him like he's the last Chicken McNugget. Remove it swiftly. With pleasure. I do so resent a finish flashier than my own. Ah, made you squirm. Is it out of character? I don't know. But it's fun to watch. If you're looking for your phase shifter, finders keepers. After learning the Omega Keys are meant to restore Cybertron, provided you have all four of them, Megatron orders Knockout to go into Smokescreen's mind and find the location of the Autobot base. Instead of giving up, Smokescreen gets into a fight, courtesy of the Phase Shifter. Well, aren't you the clever one? <laughs> At least he gets to keep his life, and it's a good thing Knockout has such a caring You shall serve as a constant reminder to those who dare fail me. <laughs> You know, I was gonna go on to say Megatron had a weird soft spot for Knockout, but this isn't Knockout's fate for long. Literally, he isn't even in the wall for a full episode. <sighs> ah, it's good to be back. Starscream, having realized that if he wants to live, he unfortunately has to suckle at Megatron's teat, has returned with all four Omega Keys to boot. His only condition is Megatron must make him a Decepticon once again. Megatron obliges, but first, Starscream will go through a mental trial in my favorite episode, Hatch. Megatron will peruse his memories, and if there isn't any trace of treachery, Starscream will get to live. Fail, and Starscream will meet the same fate as Internet Explorer. Inside Starscream's mind, Megatron comes upon an unwanted memory of Knockout. Case for showing mercy, Lord Starscream. Uh-oh. Does this thing have a fast forward button? Or better yet, erase? Knockout goes into survival mode, worrying Megatron will kill him for something he honestly should have known a long time ago. And no, I am not dropping that. Still, Knockout gets a bright idea. If I disconnect before a proper power down, the big guy will never emerge from Starscream's head. Hey, Knockout, did you learn nothing from Sick Mind? Dude, we'll find a way. You're just writing your own death warrant. <laughs> Everything okay here? Just checking cable integrity. In the end, Megatron has decided that he's tortured Sour Cream enough, so he allows him to return, because he's more valuable with him than against him. We must operate as a united front. That means each and every one of us. Knockout. <sighs> Thankfully, Knockout's survival is for the good of the Decepticons. He and Starscream are the ones who discover just how to access the Omega Keys. Later, he's the one to bring Shockwave back into the fold. And thank you so much, Knockout. It's a shame the Mad Doctor was only in a handful of episodes. Knockout even gets his own episode in Plus One, when he captures June and Balor during a hunt for a Predacon bone. I have a bone to pick with both of you. Kick back, relax, and enjoy the scenery.
The only problem is Starscream's piss poor training of Predaking caused him to destroy the communications disc, and he's too much of a chicken scratch to go get Soundwave. So Knockout is stuck driving around, waiting to hear back. So go on, Big M. Tell me you love me more than Starscream. Miley's. Hello. Too familiar? During this time, we get some pretty good zingers. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <sighs> oh, wait. You can't unfasten your belts. My bad. June and Fowler put him on the ropes, but in the end, he's able to successfully steal the specimen. Still, season three is a big point for Knockout. He does a lot of good, but at the same time, he's also partially responsible for their eventual downfall. Megatron performed the patch on Starscream, so as to scare him straight. Only, it was a lesson learned all too well. Starscream doesn't want to go back to scrounging for Energon scraps, so he's trying his hardest to please Megatron. He rides rivals mosquitoes in terms of being a sucker. Even more so since Shockwave's now first lieutenant in charge of all scientific endeavors. Meaning, KO's got a new boss. Ever since last season, Knockout has been testing all kinds of experiments on Silas, such as supplying him with round after round of synthetic energon. It doesn't trouble you to watch what remains of your former partner endure your scientific endeavors. Not really. I think my former partner would be pleased to be a part. As it's incomplete, Silas keeps burning through his own natural energon reserves, keeping him in a constant state of aggression and agony. <laughs> Starscream has been itching for something capable of competing with Predaking, and he thinks Silas would be perfect. He believes that if they give Silas a dose of Dark Energon in with his usual cocktail, Megatron will be able to control him. Knockout isn't so sure. True that Lord Megatron seems to possess a symbiotic link to anyone or thing infused with the dark matter, allowing him to manipulate them as if they were puppets, but it's too drastic a measure to undertake without Shockwave's approval. But Starscream uses a crazed loophole to convince him. Super soldiers fall under military operations. I am suggesting a drop or two. So Knockout adds a drop or two of Dark Energon. Um, that's more than a drop or two. That's like an entire freaking gallon. You'd make a terrible bartender. At least say something like, Oh, I can't give him one drop scream. I already gave him four rounds of synthen. I'll have to give him a full dose just to average it out. Still, the experiment goes ahead. Wait, not so fast. It's alive! Breakdown's body is brought back to life, and now he's an energon sucking vampire. Need energon. <laughs> Guess this means Silas is stuck inside of a zombie on life support, unable to fight back. That tater tot casserole is truly the definition of karma. He escapes and goes around making more of him. this episode aired in June, but this is the closest they ever got to a Halloween special. Knockout wants to come clean to Megatron. Sound the alarm! Out of the question. Megatron will undoubtedly hold us responsible. But we are! Well, you are mostly. But Starscream insists they can take care of him themselves. This ship is crawling with highly trained Viacon troopers armed for combat. The moment Silas attempts to feed, they will neutralize him for us. Starscream, I don't have the time or resources to make a montage, you're lucky. Surprisingly, the Viacons can't stop Silas, so now they have dozens of other problems to deal with. You there! Have you noticed any unusual activity? In this sector? Having lost Silas and realizing the entire warship might soon be zombie gone, Knockout and Starscream hunker down and say their final words. If this is indeed the end, if we are to become Terracon Chow, it has been an honor serving Lord Megatron with you. Well, wow. for just a brief second, Starscream was human. You're no breakdown, though I must confess I have always admired your lustrous finish. 
And wait, did Knockout admit that he, Knockout and Starscream are ready to go out in a blaze of glory? But first, they gotta pay the piper. What exactly is going on? Allow me to handle this. It's Knockout's fault! Precisely my what?! But before Megatron rips out his beating belt, he tells them they have to right their wrong. Find this creation of yours and eradicate it immediately! Good thing Arachnid does it for them. As a result of their major F-up, they lost the entire Insecticon hive and over half their military might. Still, Megatron is surprisingly gentle with Knockout. Need I remind you that as the ship's medic, you report directly to Shockwave, not Starscream. You will hand over all of your projects to him immediately. As you wish, my liege. Talk about a slap on the wrist. Allow me to explain things in a manner which I know you'll understand. <gasps> Looks like Starscream won't be able to use his for a week. Wait a minute. Season 3 also goes on to imply that, while Knockout likes his comrades, he's begun to feel less and less like a teen player. Apparently fetching is all I'm good for lately. It wasn't all that long ago I used to run this lab. Now I am everyone's gopher. Major tell don't show, guys. And if their intention was for Knockout to fall from grace, it was pretty rushed. Throughout the season, he was treated pretty well, better than usual. You have served me well today, Knockout. Which is more than I can say for some. Even in first, Megatron isn't his usual stern self. And we've seen how Megatron could be with Knockout. This time at least, he was well within his rights to yell and he didn't. Is this because of the Silas incident? If so, have a line explaining that. Like when he says, Do I look like hired help to you, Autobot? Have Shockwave say something like, Well, if it weren't for your failures with Silas, you would be more, most illogical. It's a little hard to believe they view him as nothing more than a glorified assistant. Maybe Starscream does, but not the rest of the nemesis. Considering what's at stake, wouldn't Megatron have told him something along the lines of, We need to keep Ratchet comfortable so he doesn't try to escape. Seriously, the only difference is now he reports to a new boss. Knockout. Supervise our guest in my absence. Wow, thanks for the big vote of confidence. He still gets to advise Megatron. I am gonna get it out of the way now. They do end up redeeming him. But the way it's presented, at least in the main show, feels super last minute. Like they only did it because they knew Knockout was a fan favorite. So they couldn't just kill him off. Or this was their plan for breakdown, but Knockout just did not fit. Still, I think it's a nice touch how, when Ratchet is polite to him, Knockout seems sincerely touched by it. Thank you. You're welcome. In the last episode, the Decepticons fall, and Knockout tries to join the winning team. What? I'm joining the winning team! Is it because he's just being a survivalist? Is it because Ratchet's kindness got to him? Maybe a little bit of both? <laughs> Damn it, Miko! That's when we get the show's finale movie, Predacons Rising. Ever since the series finale, Knockout has been locked on board the Nemesis, with the Viacons who didn't swear loyalty to the Autobots. We're prisoners of war, we had rights! When are we going to have access to an oil bath? His condition changes when he crosses paths with his old boss. As Unicron prepares to destroy Cybertron, Starscream implores Knockout to take over the warship in the name of safety. And in the process, he gets to pay his enemies back in kind. In case you're wondering, Smokescreen is in no position to come to your rescue right now. <sighs> Scrap. But during their coup, Starscream shows signs he doesn't consider this an equal partnership. Earth would be nice, now that Unicron no longer seems to be calling it home. Shut up, you! So Knockout makes his move. Now will you believe I'm joining the winning team? One thing, I like how the movie makes the point he only switched sides because he doesn't like his new boss. Even if I had helped him seize this ship, he would have probably just fired me out of the first airlock. Oh, and he's rude. And as the Autobots need all the help they can get, they choose to see his turnaround as genuine. The movie does end with the hopeful note he could turn his life around for the better, but it might take a while. Every sentient being possesses the capacity for change. 
Well, I never really had the best role models. Still, I choose to believe he did. And that was Knockout. Wow. I didn't expect this script to be this long. Even if Transformers Prime doesn't get a lot of focus, I think we can all agree. Knockout was one of the best parts to come out of the show. He's funny and makes for a great antagonist. Are there moments where I wish he was more included? Sure, but what we got was more than enough. Sucks he doesn't appear in the sequel show. Yeah, he really doesn't. Not even a cameo. What the hell, Riders? You didn't even bring back Megatron. I am so 